Hi, I'm Rosie Huntington-Whiteley and these are my beauty truths. I'm not really sure if my definition of happiness has shifted so much over the years, but I will say since becoming a mother and entering into my 30s, I'm certainly more aware of the things that bring joy in a much more meaningful way. I'm still someone that loves to go shopping. I, I love material things and they bring me joy, but it's much more fleeting. And I think becoming a mum and having those really intimate, special moments with my son and my family brings me that everlasting fulfillment and joy and happiness. I always describe myself as being sort of introvert, extrovert. And obviously this year we spent a lot of time introverted and I really need that balance to my life. I, I'm an Aries, I'm a big believer in astrology and I just know how that kind of interaction with people and the freedom to go about and do things really gives me a lot of energy and inspiration. I always find it really interesting because uh, a lot of people are like, does she have a smile? And I, I actually think of myself as being a very smiley person, but I think, you know, when you're sort of thrust onto a red carpet or you're kind of walking down the street and there's sort of half a dozen paparazzi in front of me, I find it actually really uncomfortable and, and nerve wracking. And, and then there's times when, you know, Jason and I get photographed together and you know we're not putting on this sort of public display of affection and people are like what's wrong with them if they had an argument and we're like no who goes around walking around snogging each other in public after 10 years just normal I've definitely found there's been periods of time over the last year that have been really really challenging I think some of the things that have helped me sort of cope just getting up in the morning and going for a 20 minute run in the park and I put on a podcast, uh, motivational speaking, something of that nature. And that simple thing really invigorated me and gave me energy for the rest of the day. It made me feel inspired to get on with my day. It grounded me, it made me feel really grateful. I think so often it's really important to, you know, see the positivities that you have in your own life. Look at life as working for you instead of happening to you. Just trying to be in the moment really, really helps. Eating well is really important. I've definitely binged over the last year and enjoyed my ice cream and, and all of those treats because you know, why not, we're at home. But I, I see after a week or so, it really kind of brings me down, makes me feel sluggish. So just tweaking that from time to time and getting back on track. Failing that, I lock myself in my bathroom for a good hour and call my mum or walk down the bottom of the garden <laughs> and do some deep breathing. I mean, I think it's really important for everyone to remember that no one's got it figured out. No one has it um, all together. And, you know, I hear a, a lot of people sort of mention that they sort of feel guilty for caring so much about their skin or their you know well-being or taking that time for themselves to um, feel good and look better and I recognize it's part of my job of course but it it does have an effect on people and their self-confidence and as a teenage girl I've always had acne prone skin and it's something that a lot of people wouldn't probably equate with me and they sort of see the final polished, retouched red carpet image. And really there's been periods of, of time where it does really get me down. I mean, just even today I have a breakout and it definitely affects my confidence and my well-being. And, you know, I think the way I've learned to manage it is a really good skincare routine, having access to seeing a really good facialist, obviously when it's safe to do so, sleeping well, eating well, getting some exercise, getting outdoors. It's definitely a journey and I um, relate to anybody that kind of has to go through it. I remember getting a piece of advice really early on when my career sort of really started to take off and someone said to me, never believe the hype. And I've always remembered that because it's sort of meant different things to me at different times. But at the same time, it's really important to acknowledge your successes and enjoy them and feel proud of yourself, but just not to get so wrapped up in it that becomes the only thing that you kind of acknowledge and live for. You know, when I come home after a day of doing something, my son doesn't care that I just shot the cover of a magazine or he doesn't care if I just signed a big deal or just sort of managed something great at work. He just wants me and he wants me to be, you know, there for him with all of his needs. And when I walk through the door to get home, it all kind of drops aside. And I, and I like that a lot. It brings a lot of meaning to my life because sometimes my work can feel 
you know, relatively superficial, I'm, I'm going to be honest. So those sort of moments at home really, um, you know, bring a lot of meaning to my life. Kind of working through the challenges of raising a family with my partner as well, with new parents. It's so full on being a parent, it really is. There's so many things that I just never knew about and never really understood the challenges and the juggle and the balance of it all. And um, it's, it's a real ride. And I'm trying to think of a, of a time in my life where there was a lot of hype going on where I didn't feel so happy. I mean, I, th I think the most recent time I can think of was when I fell pregnant. I, my pregnancy was planned, we'd been trying for a while, but when it kind of came, it was like, oh my gosh, it was all consuming and I felt this real desire to hold on to my privacy. And of course, my bump started to show and, you know, sort of word got to the press and I'd managed to keep it under wraps for like five months. There was this real sort of push for me to share more and you know in the end I decided to, to make the announcement which was something I kind of didn't really want to do. For me there was so much anxiety and nerves around having a baby and you just there's so many new things that to share it in front of everybody as well it wasn't a case of not wanting to because now I'm ha very happy to talk about motherhood and baby stuff. I could talk about it all day long, but it was just more, I just didn't feel comfortable to talk about something that was sort of so rapidly having, you know, happening to me. And I felt kind of the real need to sort of become a little bit more introverted and, and I wanted to be at home and, and um, you know, and then, and then as my pregnancy sort of blossomed, I started to feel more and more confident, but definitely a time when you're going through a lot of firsts and to sort of go through those under the microscope of, the public was was a little bit uncomfortable for me, which is why you probably hardly see any pictures of me <laughs> pregnant, because I really kind of hid out, you know, most of the time, and and took the time off work as well towards the end of my pregnancy, which was which was really special. So it was a very intimate, quiet time in my life. I feel really happy that I got that time to just slow down and connect with myself and connect with the changes that were happening and really prepare myself for something that was ultimately the most life-changing experience. I don't know if I was really that excited about any of the sort of changes that my body went through, but when that bump starts to show and it's in full bloom, even though it was a completely different identity and body change from what I was used to, it, it was a confidence in a different way and I felt very womanly and I felt very, earthy and it was just incredible every part of your body just changes in some way and you know after I had my son it took a really long time to get back to a place where I felt that I was the same before and actually what I really had to learn was things wouldn't weren't going to be the same as they were before and I had to kind of embrace those things and there are things even now where I go you know that's that's not how it used to be that's not how things used to look or where they used to sit but I try and embrace it I try and really just feel you know that I created a life I created our beautiful son and you know I look at him and ultimately the stretch marks and the things that go south were kind of worth it so. <laughs> at least that's what I have to tell myself <laughs> I had a lot of social anxiety before I had Jack. I would say walking sort of outside in public places and crowded areas gave me a lot of anxiety and I really didn't feel comfortable doing it. And now, and now you know, I've had this, this baby and I just felt like I can't, I've got to get out. I've got to go do things. And he really pushed me to sort of get out of myself and, and now I feel very comfortable being out and about and getting on with things and it's really about him versus me. You're always learning how to love yourself, but don't reach a place where you're like, oh, okay, I've learned to love myself and now it's now it's done and I'm just forever kind of in a good place. It's, it's evolving, you're evolving, you're changing, you're growing up, you're seeing different things, curveballs get thrown at you, challenges happen. I know what it's about, whether I actually practice it or not is a separate thing, but you know, living in the moment, being present, expressing a lot of gratitude, your situation, working hard, always doing your best, uh, being kind to others, being kind to yourself. That's to me what true self-care is, is about taking care of you know, your mental health, the love that you have 
for yourself and, and the people that are dear to you. Love is everything. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for listening to my beauty truths.